right, we're back. Another episode, another guest. And here with me is the fantastic and wonderful uh, Colton Ford. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the little show. You know? My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Second episode. Thank you for having you me. You know, when I um, when I emailed you, I wasn't sure if you were um, going to say yes to my interview because you, know, you haven't been that much in the public eye like the last sort of like two years. You know, was was that a um, was that a conscious decision? Or? Um, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've put out a, a couple of singles, uh, but I'm not uh, touring. Uh, right now, I'm kind of regrouping. So, uh, the stuff that I'm working on right now uh, is a lot of songwriting for other people, but I'm also working on a couple of projects that are going to be driven in in a way that is more incognito. Um, so, yeah, just regrouping a little bit. Okay. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm older now. I want to do things a little differently. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you a fan of, so of uh, social media? Um, I mean, it's a love-hate thing, you know, I see the value in it, um, but I think after a while it can get uh, a little tedious, and certainly, you know, at 55, um, you know, I prefer to be in the moment with my life and, uh, as opposed to recounting everything, okay, okay. so I use it a little differently. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we live in a world that's driven by it, so yeah. you, you kind of have to Included in whatever you're doing to market and promote, yeah. you know what you're putting out there. Oh, so. Do you like doing it, or do you feel more like oh, like it's sort of like like a burden, like oh yeah, I have to do sort of like, you know. Well, I think it's part keep my name out there or whatever. Yeah, I, I th I'm not as concerned as I was yeah. when I was younger, and uh, certainly was in a different place in my career. Um, I don't necessarily look at it as as burdensome. I just think it's something that you have to do. Um, it's not necessarily my thing, um, but I do it for the work. Yeah, yeah. you know. So also, there's a purpose behind it, as opposed right. to just saying, "I just had lunch here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was surprised, for instance, that, that for instance, that, that you weren't on Instagram, for example. Well, there is a Colton yeah. Ford on Instagram. Yeah. I'm just not in, oh, involved okay. with it. So <laughs> just a, a fan. I a mean, fan yeah, yeah, okay. 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 yeah. So I know, I know Instagram is popular. I, I yeah. just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just of a different generation. Yeah. So I, I just, uh, I do my Facebook and I still do a little tweeting and, and uh, I might, you know, get on Instagram, but it's gonna be something different. Right. Like I said, it's, you know, I'm, I'm really focused on the music and I want mm. people to be hearing and receiving the music and not the persona or what the brand yeah my brand has been, because yeah. uh, I think it's, it's worked for me and it also kind of can get in, get in the way. Yeah. Um, and especially again, right now, at, at, at being in my mid-50s, the focus, I don't want it to be necessarily on me, and the physicality uh, yeah, of yeah, Colton exactly. Ford, yeah. um, but just to the, the music. Yeah, yeah. So none of that other stuff gets in the way. All right. Yeah. One of the things that really like intrigued me about you is, has been like sort of like the evolution of your career. Mm -hmm. You know, because what, what um, the media has often portrayed you sort of as like you know um, um, an adult performer to singer, while in actual fact it's been singer, maybe a little dip in the adult movie world, mm -hmm. and then back to singing. That was. Uh, um, uh, when did you know like you had a passion for singing? Uh, I was uh, always singing and performing. I think uh, I did a documentary called Naked Fame. I think my mom talked about it, if I recall. And you know, I was happy, and I was always performing, mm -hmm. and it was just something that uh, that I loved doing. And then as I got older, I got more connected to that being a passion of mine, and songwriting, and acting, and all those types of things. And uh, when I got out of uh, college, I went right into it, and. Um, I was in a jazz quartet for a while, like Manhattan Transfer, and then I moved up to LA and I got signed to John St. James, who was uh, Stacy Q and Louie Louie and Bardot's producer, yeah. and I put a single out then. And in 92, I got signed to Michael O'Hara and Denise Rich, who were big songwriters. 
and paired up with Frankie Knuckles, the godfather of house. Yeah, okay, because well, can we just have a moment and talk about that? That's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so um, so uh, anyway, uh, all, all that to say, it's been a progression, yeah, yeah. and I and I did ten months of something yeah. kind of salacious, but I've always been writing and singing and performing. That's all just right. what I do. Uh, um, um, do you remember any sort of like artists that you listened to from when you were younger, like sort of like people you, uh, that inspired you? Absolutely, um, a whole bunch of people. Um, Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, um, Tony Terry, um, Shaka Khan, Sarah Vaughan, yes. The Commodores, Earth, Wind and Fire. I mean, I'm, I'm a 60s, 70s boy and R&B and soul was, was uh, my thing. Uh, so, you know, I took all of that in and, and I think singing with those folks I got to um, figure out how to use my voice in, in a way that uh, enabled me to riff and ad lib and, and just kind of feel what it was that I was doing. Um, so th those are the people that really, some of the people, uh, Tony Braxton, Babyface, I mean, you know, there's so many people that have inspired, I know that have inspired me, but I, like Stevie Wonder is, you know, he's like, He's everything, yeah. <laughs> you know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, that, that just got me into, you know, my whole R&B soul thing. I mean, I just gravitated towards it. Okay, so one of the people that has been uh, very um, essential in your music career, which we just mentioned him, um, the godfather of, uh, of House, mm -hmm. um, Frankie Knuckles. Mm -hmm. can, you some, can you tell me something about the relationship with him? Or yeah, how you I, met him? Yeah, I was with uh, Denise Rich and Michael O'Hara with, was with their production company. I was working with one of their producers named Lathan Armour, who was working with Frankie on Frankie's second album. And they were looking for a male vocalist uh, to feature on the album. His first album had several artists, and he just wanted one male vocalist, preferably. And uh, they were having a hard time finding a male vocalist. So Lathan and I were working on my own stuff. And Lathan had me sing a couple of the songs that Frankie and he were working on. Frankie and his people heard it, you know, they loved it, they were like, this is it. Virgin heard it, this is it. And then, um, and then Virgin found out I was a white dude. And um, I'll never forget, I, I flew out to New York to start recording and uh, the a &R person from Virgin that was uh, handling Frankie's project was there. And, Frankie and her got into this argument because they were concerned about like how we're going to market this black artist, Frankie Knuckles, yeah. with this white dude who is singing his stuff. And Frankie's like, what better way for us to reach a broader market with somebody that can do it, that's soulful, that, you know, it's not really about the color, it's about the music. So we started moving forward, but uh, eventually, uh, there were a couple of people at Virgin that just didn't want it to happen this way. So right. that didn't work out for me and uh, I was replaced by a diva for Frankie's album. And then four years later, I had another deal on the table with right. Virgin and I started working with uh, a bunch of producers and you know, got caught up in an upheaval at the label and got shelved and you know, it's, uh, it's not an unusual no, story. Yeah. So so do you have any maybe like nice sort of uh, one funny little Frankie story? You know, Did you I, want to share with us? The only thing that I can that I can recount is just the way that I felt working with him. Uh, we were working at Quad Studios, which is amazing in New York and has had so many hits recorded there. Um, but I just remember feeling so connected to Frankie. I mean, it, it sounds silly, but I, I was in my 20s and. Um, and we were recording in the studio and like, you know, we were hanging and I was sitting on his lap and I mean, we were just, you know, he just took me in and was so kind and supportive and, uh, and we were talking about a tour and they were talking about having me do a duet with uh, Lisa Stansfield or uh, nice. Shante Moore. I mean, all these, yeah. uh, so I was just on yeah. cloud nine, yeah. um, you know, unfortunately, you know, things happen the way that they did, and that's, again, not an unusual story, because getting, getting signed to a label is just the first hurdle, mm -hmm. and you've got to get the label behind yeah, you yeah. and all that kind of good stuff. But he and his, um, his team could not have been nicer, and, and Frankie and I kept in contact, and we finally got to do something together 
several years back, I think 2012 with Let Me Live Again. Okay. So finally we got to put oh, something out. I freaking out. love that remix, by the way. It's so good. <laughs> it's the, the it's best. So, and it's so good. It's, it's like, his yeah. musical yeah. taste yeah. and his, his ideas and where he went musically with stuff was genius. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think uh, any of those songs from back then will ever see the light of day? Um, uh, probably not. No, <laughs> no. But they were gr they were great yeah. songs. Okay, yeah, they were yeah, great yeah. songs. Yeah. But um, you know, there were songwriters involved, and you know, so yeah. there's no way that it's going to yeah. be released. But you can always put. Them. I mean, do, you, do you still own them? No, no, no. Oh, you, you don't have no, them. No, oh, okay. I thought maybe I mean, you, I didn't, you can I, secretly put them out like like bootleg. Like, no, I, I can't. <laughs> I I was literally <laughs> okay. the the artist for a hire, and okay. the songs were written by Frankie and Lathan and a whole team of people. Yeah. Um, so I was just going in there and being the vocalist. So okay. yeah, I didn't have any rights. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, uh, me personally, I'm a huge fan of your, um, you know, your big club bangers, you know, the, the, right, right, the right. up-tempo songs and stuff, but um, what is the genre of music um, Colton feels most uh, at home with? I think um, at, at the root of, my musicality is R&B soul music. Um, I, I really like to feel things when I hear music. And, and that's the way that I kind of do my thing. You know, when I write, um, I like let the track kind of inspire me. I mean, I may go in with a specific idea in mind, uh, but oftentimes uh, I get a track, I start singing a melody and words start popping through and then I kind of start growing from what those words are yeah. and how it feels. I have gone in and uh, specifically like with Tug of War, Quentin Harris, who was the producer for that album, um, wanted me to write about uh, something similar to like, if, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. So I wrote Tug of War with that in mind. Um, just You, Just Me that I did on uh, my uh, the Way That I Am album, uh, I actually wrote, no that's not on that album, I'm sorry, that's on the Glenn Sukessian album. Um, I, I wrote the lyric first and, uh, and then I got a track and I wrote the melody with the lyric to fit in the yeah. track. Uh, but I like to, to be in the moment with it and let the, uh, the music kind of just carry me and so that's kind of what, do I, what I attach to in terms of music. So that's more R&B, yeah. soul music, and I think house has that, you know, and funk, and you know, that's why I love it so much. Do you remember your first ever live performance? Like, uh... oh god, it was like <laughs> elementary school. What was it? <laughs> elementary school. What was it? Oh yeah, it was. Oh, like uh, a... It was first grade, and uh, our teacher was having us come. Each kid come up and talk about what they did over the summer and, and I went up and said I went to Disneyland and I went on this ride that had this theme song, It's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow and so I sang that and All the right. teacher took me to the principal and was like, you got to hear this guy, oh, really? this nice. little boy okay. and yeah. they did the teacher parent conference and I sang it there and, okay. you know, and I just continued. Uh, I mean, how old were you then? I guess I was six. six? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nice. Start them young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you remember something like your first um, big performance that really something like the, the, the significant first, that, that yeah, yeah. stood out? Um, oh, no, better question. What, what is actually one of your uh, most favorite performances you've done? Well, I, I've had a, a lot of really great moments, but I, I um, Sorry, opened the, the True Colors <laughs> tour with Cindy yeah. Lauper in uh, select uh, cities. I played the Greek over here with the tour. That was amazing. Um, you know, I did the pier dance in New York City with Ultra and there's, you know, 20, 25,000 nice. people. Um, I mean, it, you know, it, it, I, I got up on stage with Shaka Khan and, and like, worked her. <laughs> How was that like? Because she invited people up yeah. on stage okay, and I just okay. walked right up and took okay. the mic and she was like, wait a minute. Yeah. And I, like I started, she, it was a uh, town or something good. So, and I absolutely adore her. She's one of the artists that I absolutely adore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I just started riffing and she started playing off me and, and we ended up uh, hanging out for a couple months and her brother-in-law at the time was starting a, an international label that they wanted to sign me okay. to. And, that all fell apart, you know. So 
Okay. So those moments were great yeah, moments. Yeah. But I've had, I've had wonderful experiences in my career and uh, certainly there were just as many special moments in smaller venues. It's not really about the size, it's you know, just about the energy yeah. and the experience. All right. This is interesting. Um, 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 before you actually went into the, um, before you stepped into the adult world of, mm -hmm. of film, actually you, you already did like uh, a mainstream movie and quite a big one actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you played in 2000, was the, the John Schlesinger film? Yeah, The Next Best the, Thing. The Next Best Thing, with yeah. none other than Madonna and Rupert Everett. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. was that like? That's pretty like, amazing. Uh, it was great. I, I, uh, I knew John Schlesinger. I worked with his uh, partner, Michael Childers, who was a big photographer back from Andy Warhol interview days and uh, and then I met John and and uh, we all connected and John was working on the movie and he's like you know how would you like to be in the movie and I said I would love it and um, he actually put one of my songs in the film um, that was later pulled at the last minute by somebody else what song was that uh, your love is everything okay yeah. okay which is the last song on my tug of war album yeah. but the version from that album is, is the one I did with Quentin. Okay. The version I did before, yeah. I wrote with Denise Rich and Lathan Armour, and Lathan produced it. So it was a, a R and B kind of a groove. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was a great experience. She was really cool to me. He was really cool to me. Um, and and John was just an amazing guy. How, an amazing how was guy. how was Madonna like? <laughs> um, we, I mean, we had fun. Feel about Madonna. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we had fun. Uh, yeah? We had uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was cool. Yeah. 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 Do you remember any funny story? Or she was very inviting. Yeah. Well, she was talking about uh, when she was pregnant and how the uh, helicopters and whatnot were uh, like hovering over her home for days, and it caused her so much stress okay. that she thinks that it, you know, yeah. induced. Uh, labor. Oh, she was pregnant by Rocco? Was it, Rocco? Uh, yeah, Rocco, right? it yeah, it was her yeah, daughter, yeah, yeah. Her, her first uh, child. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So that wasn't Rocco, that was, uh, oh. I can't remember the guy's uh, name. Lourdes? That's, that's no, Lourdes, the girl's yeah, name, yeah. but I can't remember the, the, the father's name. But Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, you know, I remember yeah. her telling, yeah. talking about how stressful it was, and, yeah. and then we just, Shot the shit. I'm mean, okay. talking about all kinds of crazy okay, stuff. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty good. I remember is uh, Rupert Everett and what's his other name? Um, the famous, famous. Who was oh, in, oh, scene? Doogie uh, Howser. Um, yeah, but the, the other one. Uh, oh, uh, was it Antonio? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. I can't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was not very famous in like, he the, played comic, the, the comedy. The, the comedy. The love interest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, was it? No. I'm confused of him with the name, sorry, but... <laughs> I, I can't remember his name no, either. Right, never mind. He dated yeah. Julie Roberts for a minute, too, I know that. He was on a television show. I know who you're talking about. Neil, Neil, Neil Patrick, Patrick Harris. Harris, there you go, yes, no, yes. That's it. Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, so it was pretty... Uh, pretty uh, like brain farting all No, but it was a, a, a pretty, a very amazing cost, you know, to, to be, be Oh, it was, it was, yeah, it was yeah, great yeah, fun, yeah. Uh, fun, yeah, and, I, yeah. and I played their friend, and, yeah. um, you know, it was just fun. Okay, nice. It was fun. So uh, while we're in the diva section of Madonna, and uh, you mentioned before, because um, uh, you, um, Cindy Lauper, yeah, because uh, you were also in a music video of her, uh, into, yeah. the, into the nightlife, yeah, and you also toured with her, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. How was that like? Um, she's amazing. She's just what you would expect her to be. Okay. And my manager at the time, an executive producer of Tug of War, and her manager Lisa, were tight, and so they were really supportive of me and Lisa pulled me into the right. video and then they brought me into the tour and um, Cindy is a limitless ball of energy I mean, this woman has so much energy oh, yeah. and she's so generous yeah. and she uh, you know she pulled me into some of her interviews and, and um, Rosie O'Donnell was cool and I remember uh, when I played Bethel I, I came off the stage and Cindy was in the wings and she grabbed me and she's like, I have someone who wants to meet you. And she took me to Rosie O'Donnell's dressing room and Rosie's like, how are your parents? How's Peter? And I was like, how do you know about my parents yeah, and okay, Peter? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, her, um, 
I think it was her hairstylist, was a fan of mine and turned her on to my documentary. Oh, okay. So she, she had she just saw watched it. it. Okay, yeah. nice, nice. And she was like, you know, the whole yeah. porn thing, okay, whatever, yeah, but yeah. it's really about your voice <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. after that, I released uh, Under the Covers and, and uh, you know, I listened to her advice and I just put my face on the cover and nothing yeah. else. Um, B-52s were amazing. It was, it was just great. It was just great. So it sounds like really pretty amazing. It yeah. was an amazing yeah. experience. Yeah. Absolutely, nice. Deborah Cox uh, and I shared a dressing room. <laughs> 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 but but it was um, it was a really fun experience, and the energy uh, was just so positive. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I met Carson Cressley, and he and I are buds. You know, and became. Uh, friends from that. Okay. And, uh, so it's just a, yeah. a wonderful. I experience. love him. He's pretty fabulous. He's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to talk about much about the the whole adult stuff because you know pe people already know about that and like you know whatever they want to uh, it's so find out about it's it. So it's, yesterday it's, it's, they, they can Google it, whatever. But the, the only thing um, I want to ask you. Seventeen years ago. <laughs> the only thing I want to ask you about is like, um, 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 what is it like to be sort of like this sexual icon? You know, sort of like. Is, you know, because uh, if I go out and ask any um, gay man, you know, Colin Ford, oh, everybody knows Colin Ford. Well, I think, um, I mean, I, I did it, you know, when I was 39, turning 40. So, and I had been in the entertainment industry for so long, and I, I knew who I was, you know, I'd been doing therapy for 10 years. And so it, it has never really defined me, and, and obviously I know it exists, but I don't necessarily. Um, think of myself in any kind of way because of it. Yeah. I just think of myself as the way that I think of myself. Yeah. And, um, and that's just a part of my experience. And certainly uh, I have an exhibitionist in me. And, <coughs> and so I explored that a little bit more. Um, before I, I had that experience, I'd, you know, I'd done a lot of photo shoots and I'd done some nude modeling for art books and whatnot. So, and in an interesting way, it, it really felt like an extension of the performer in me because you're put into these situations with people that you've just met and in order to make it feel real and yeah. hot and everything you yeah. want when you're watching it, yeah, yeah. you know, you have to create that. So in a, in a very interesting way, it was an extension of the performer. Well, also like, for example, like, or, or now or even like back then, like for example, if you go to the supermarket or people would come up to you, like, do, do people treat you different? Because of it, because because of, no, but because of the the the, the outside, because of the, the look, the 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 the, the fact that they've been brought into this intimate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it depends on the environment. I mean, you know, obviously, when you're going out to clubs and whatnot, and people are in an altered state, and they feel that they know you or that they've had an intimate experience with you because they have seen you and probably were engaged in some sort of sexual experience yeah. while they were watching. Yeah. Um, some people cross the line and you just have to kind of steer them yeah, yeah. in the right direction. Okay. But I think the, you know, the Any cray cray people? Huh? Any, any cray crazy people? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And you know, yeah. uh, I, I always uh, want to be, yeah. you know, appreciative and kind and everything, but you know, I have boundaries with it mm. and if they start to cross the line, yeah. then I, then I adjust accordingly. Okay. Um, but I think you know one of the the things that I didn't necessarily think about because when I did it, I ha I was with a partner, my partner who was a huge porn star. Um, but I didn't think about how difficult it could be for you know a, a relationship uh, with someone that's done this for someone that hasn't done it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, for example, I I remember I was having breakfast with uh, my partner at the time and. Um, I had just uh, done a gig, um, singing a gig, and this was years after I did porn. And you know, we're having breakfast, and these people come up, and they're like, "Sorry to interrupt, but we just have to say we beat off to you this morning." And it was just, you know, and I'm like, "Okay, well, great. This is my partner, yeah. and we're having yeah. breakfast, yeah, you know." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I understand that it's a unique uh, experience. Well, was that actually the opening sentence? The, yeah. Oh, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. and I was like, great. You know, cheers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's but it's a you know you're you're letting them into something that is personal and and has a lot of stuff that is attached yeah, to it, yeah. depending on how you feel about sex and sexual orientation and you know 
exhibitionism mm. and you know everyone's got a different opinion on those things yeah. and it's driven by all kinds of things including religion and all that stuff yeah. so you know right. um, can we have a moment and talk about that um, iconic attitude magazine cover from 2000 which one was that uh, was <laughs> <laughs> there's just so many <laughs> No, this is the famous one with uh, uh, Francois Sagat was on a... Oh, Rose, oh, yeah. oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, the, um, the, the sex issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they put, I think, about 14 of us on yeah. the cover. How was that like? Do you remember um, Yeah, it was great. Yeah. I mean, um, they photographed groups uh, separately. So there, I was with Arpad uh, and... Uh, I can't remember the, the other guy's name. <laughs> <laughs> but the, 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 the two guys that were flanking me, okay. we, we shot together. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, some people were shot over uh, in Europe, you know, Philip oh, Riches oh, was a photographer. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, and then they just kind of put us all together yeah, yeah, as if yeah. we were all in okay. one room. Um, but it was great. Philip yeah. uh, Riches is an amazing photographer, and uh, I had a great experience shooting with him. Yeah. And yeah, it was fun. Okay, nice. Yeah. Nice. I forgot about that. <laughs> no, I, mean, I remember because I remember the, the, the it was a fold out. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. And I wasn't on yeah. the fold either. I was like, yes, <laughs> there was no staple in the middle of my. <laughs> advice somebody has ever given you? Oh, the best advice that someone has ever given me. Well, I, you know, I've been in therapy for 25 years, and I think uh, doing the work and staying in the work and exploring yourself yeah. and your childhood and whatever issues from your childhood that you have an address that need to be addressed so that you can as an adult not carry them forward into your adult relationships um, I think it's probably the best advice therapy people <laughs> like therapy just yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. go in and, yeah, and do yeah. the work yeah. I mean we see the effects uh, I also I'd say it, it, it is very much an, an American thing, like like although it, it, in Holland we have therapists, of course, as well. But like, like uh, I think we're more like very sort of like ah, uh, you know, like if you fix your own problems kind of thing. But but but, yeah. but, but, but I do like the fact that you know, uh, uh, you know, it, it's there. You know. Well, uh, the reality yeah. of it is, yeah. is that um, I have therapy. Like we two years. we <laughs> we know enough about yeah. the psyche and 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 uh, the impact of trauma yeah. and. Uh, I mean, there's so much information out there that, um, you know, anyone that discounts it isn't really taking into consideration the fact that all of these things that yeah. happen to us leave a mark, they mm. have an effect. Yeah. And so if we don't get in to the trenches with yeah. it, get to know it and figure out uh, what went down and how we can have a relationship with it, then the effects, the negative effects will permeate into our relationships and will be projected onto the people that we love and we don't really know why, you yeah. know? So I think self-exploration, um, you know, some people may discount it or feel like, you know, that's for the weak. No, actually, well, no, it takes, I think it's very good. yeah, I think it takes yeah. a lot of courage yeah. to go in there and face yeah. one's demons or, or, or painful things from mm -hmm. the past to better understand who we are and become more self-actualized and conscious. I think we see especially in reality TV and what have you, just the worst behavior. Yeah. And, and we're, we're, you know, it's, it's glorified yeah. and it's, it's, you know. Well, we're talking about reality uh, um, uh, shows and stuff like that. Well, and look, like, at, look at the situation yeah. with our, our president. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah It's yeah. like, yeah. Hello. what's his, back <laughs> what's yeah, his yeah. background? Yeah, like, yeah. we had a reality yeah. show and he's been a, a yeah. horrible businessman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I just think we need more yeah, modeling. Mafia, man. Uh -huh. mafia. Uh, which yeah. is all, the whole thing is <laughs> yeah. just yeah. unconscionable that's, yeah. that's going down in this country. Yeah. But I, I think um, I think the, the best advice I could give somebody is to go in and, and start the self exploration so that you know you can live a an authentic conscious life and and take care of yourself. Yeah. You know, okay. and in the process 
you know, you take care of yourself, you love yourself, you're more able to yeah. give that to the people yeah. okay. you know, around you. Yeah. Also, like something I do like a bit of like the, the, the dark side, sort of like, you know, the struggle and the pain, you know, it sort of makes it interesting as well. But, but of course, the therapy always, you know. Well, but, the, but and, and that's part of life. Yeah, and I yeah. think it's the struggle and the pain yeah. that we all have to go through yeah, because yeah. that's part of this experience yeah. is where we can grow and learn the most if we go in and check it out Absolutely. as yeah. opposed to like just ignoring it mm. or denying it or yeah. like you know stuffing it way 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 down deep so that we feel that we're not having to deal with it when in fact yeah. it resonates on a deep level and it comes out in the way that we express ourselves okay. and the way we interact with people yeah. so no, that's my <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. for therapy yeah, very good very good <laughs> the people, I, I've, so. I've had a yeah, great yeah. Yeah. run and I've yeah. been really fortunate yeah. um, and uh, you know one of my yeah. collaborators right now is Larry Peace aka T Fix who was like Prince's DJ of choice for 25 okay. years he executive produced uh, co-executive produced my Glenn Sikessian album we wrote a bunch of songs together so we're working on stuff together okay. but like I said earlier is going to come out in a way that you won't necessarily know okay you know but like, can, can we expect a new album or um, I think right now I'm gonna be doing singles, and again, it's it's not. It's gonna be more mysterious, as okay. to, you know. But will we still know it's gonna be cold? And for, uh, yeah, eventually, but not not uh, initially. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe uh -huh. you know from my my voice and stuff, but well, I, you, I, but you, you know you, you're not gonna pull like a Millie Vanilli, right? Like you're gonna no 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 no. no. Like think, gonna <laughs> think more of like a Daft Punk, okay, okay. like a Sia thing, okay. where where no, it's okay, it's okay. real. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is real music. No no no. no. I mean that, that that somebody is somebody else is is gonna uh, lip sync oh, to your no, song. No, or no 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 <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean eventually it's gonna uh, you know it will yeah. it will come out, but okay. initially it's it's gonna come out under different names okay. and you won't oh. necessarily know uh, okay. okay you know uh. they kind of like you know the whole idea of Daft Punk is like yeah, you know yeah. they're they're all right the two guys yeah, yeah. but you didn't know who they yeah. were you just yeah. knew that they were like putting okay. out you know so something more along okay, those so, lines so, so like the fans have to be careful and really like keep their ears open in case keep the ears open and and um, yeah it's yeah. going it's gonna be great okay I think it's, it's gonna be great because it's gonna be it's gonna be like the voice Okay. You're not gonna know okay. visually, yeah. but you're gonna just hear. Okay, it's gonna okay. be about the music. Okay. That's where I want the focus. But will, will we know from you, or you won't tell anybody? Like I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. we're we're still okay. working all that out. Yeah. All right. We're still working all, all right. that out. Very sneaky. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> that's why I'm saying that my relationship <laughs> with social media is just you yeah. know evolving. Yeah. You know a little yeah. bit. And and another thing that I'm that I'm also doing in tandem with my music is I I got my loan origination license and I'm working for American Financial Network and I'm originating uh, mortgages so okay. you know if anyone's purchasing a home or want to do a rate and turn refinance yeah. or a cash out refinance or if you're 62 okay. and over a, a reverse mortgage yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm doing that yeah, too yeah, yeah. Um, you know nowadays yeah. it's like a, a diversifying yeah, yeah. you know um, things are changing so rapidly that that you know, we need to. Yeah, it's hard out there, we need you know? to have a couple things <laughs> exactly. like juggling yeah, around, exactly. yeah. Um, yeah. and and the opportunity to make <coughs> money off of music is really challenging right now because okay. uh, you know you're you don't get that much off of record sales online and streaming and stuff yeah. like that. And you know, I used to be out there gigging more, which is yeah. where you know you make your money, and I'm not. I'm not doing that uh, as much right now okay. uh, for specific reasons, intentional reasons. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just keeping keeping my boat floating, floating. and sailing forward. Yeah. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see yourself in, uh, in like ten years from now? Oh my God, I'm gonna be in my mid 60s. I don't really think that far ahead, to be honest with you. But I, you know, I always. Uh, I'm hopeful of, of living an authentic life and being happy and fulfilled. And um, no, well, you, you got that good Armenian blood, so you, yeah, <laughs> you, I mean, you'll still look good. I'm like, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I want to be healthy. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. I want to yeah. have joy in my life because I think, especially in today's world, you know, you really have to find your joy yeah. because there is a lot of struggle uh, in our world today, and uh, I think we're coming to that fork in, in the road. I think yes. you know change is afoot, and it has to happen because 
uh, it can't it can't go on this way yeah. you know um, so it, for me I'm, I'm hopeful that we're able to have a sense of coming together and, and that I'm doing what I feel passionate about and I'm, and I'm happy and fulfilled do, do, do you actually think like uh, looking at the the gay community nowadays do you feel like the the younger gays are more connected with each other now or do you feel like it's going a bit like well I think that the uh, outwards I think compared that the to like world is uh, more uh, connected to the diversity uh, that exists yeah. and and of course our community is in that diverse mix of people I think um, you know I think we're hard oh, I think gay people are hard on themselves yeah. um, and I think we still are trying to find our way to be connected and powerful together and um, not have you know a housewives scenario yeah, of yeah. like this bitch fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, yeah. it's entertaining yeah. or what have you, yeah. but I but I think that, that we're still finding our way to really yeah. kind of be grounded in supporting one another. Yeah. And when we see... That's more talking about WeHo and more... Well, yeah, but, but you know what <laughs> I mean? The WeHo crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, yeah, I, but yeah. I think that, yeah. you know, I think we yeah. still are, uh, we still struggle with how yeah. to support one another. And if we see somebody that's that's exceeding or doing something and pushing the envelope I think that there's this love-hate thing that still goes on you have the people out there that are supportive and are like you know thank you yeah. you know you're representing you know I'm seeing myself and what you do and then you have people out there that are just mean yeah and and I think again much to what we were talking about therapy I think it's more a reflection on them you know not feeling good inside and they're projecting that anger so I think we as a community you know uh, need to figure out how to come together even more but I think that, that that's a global issue for humanity like we're, we're stronger together than apart mm -hmm. and I don't care who you're talking about you know uh, any ethnic group any sexual orientation you know we're po more powerful as 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 the human race as opposed to all these yeah. different you know yeah. people we're a human race made up of all kinds of different cultures and ethnic backgrounds but at the core we're all part of the same whole here and and i think that that's that we just need that everywhere yeah absolutely absolutely yeah well, colin um i want to thank you for your time my and, pleasure and, and, thank and you for talking to me having me so, on your show <laughs> <laughs> so, so well, um where can people find you like uh twitter uh, twitter colton ford stuff. colton ford music on twitter i'm on um Facebook, Colton Ford Music. Right. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you. A Robert. real pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Always a Thank pleasure. <laughs>